This video is part of a series of exam question walkthroughs looking at how to answer questions about the AQA A-level chemistry required practical activities. In this video, we're looking at the final required practical activity, which is thin layer chromatography. Before I walk you through how to get all the marks for this question, pause the video and have a go at writing a method for yourself. Just like with your GCSE chemistry required practical where you did paper chromatography, the very first step is drawing that start line. Now, of course, with TLC, it's really important that you're wearing gloves when you do this, because if you don't, you're likely to contaminate the plate. So you're going to draw a pencil line and it's going to be at the bottom of the plate, parallel to the bottom of the plate. Um, and of course, it's important that it's far enough away from the edge of that plate that when you add the solvent, the solvent doesn't go over the line. So we're going to make sure that we're drawing it at least a centimetre from the bottom, maybe a centimetre and a half. Next, we need to add our mixture that we're going to try and separate. So we're going to do this using a capillary tube so that we can add a nice, really small spot. And we're going to add that spot of the amino acid mixture onto that pencil start line that we've drawn. Then it's important that we leave the plate to completely air dry before we actually do the chromatography. So we're going to add some solvent to the tank, or you could just do this in a beaker or something, but it's important that the depth of the solvent is shallow enough that it's not going to go over that pencil line. So here I've said that my pencil line is a centimetre from the bottom of the plate, so therefore I need less than a centimetre of that developing solvent. So I'm going to put my TLC plate into the tank and we're going to specify just, you know, belt and braces, making sure the examiner understands that we know that it's really important that the solvent is not going to reach that pencil line. Then I'm going to put the lid back on my tank if I'm using a proper tank. And the reason I'm doing that is to prevent the solvent from evaporating during the chromatography. And when the solvent is um, getting close to the top of the tank, then we're going to remove that plate. So we don't want to let it run all the way to the top because we need to know exactly where that solvent front was. Um, and obviously if it runs all the way to the top and then potentially slightly over, um, we can't give a numerical value to how far the solvent went. So we need to stop before it gets all the way to the top. Um, then we're going to mark the position that solvent reached with a pencil line. So we know that's where my solvent front was because we're going to need that information for calculating the RF value later. Then we're going to dry off the plate in a fume cupboard because um, the solvent is going to evaporate and the solvents are often quite nasty and toxic and things. So we don't want to, um, to risk that. So we do it in a fume cupboard. Then you're going to visualise the plate. And in order to do that, you're going to need to have it under a UV lamp. And while you're looking at it under the UV lamp, you're going to mark the location of the spots um, using a pencil. So then we've got the location of the spots and the location of the solvent front. So you use those two values to calculate RF values. Um, so here we're going to have a spot for each pure substance. So each amino acid is hopefully going to get its own spot. And then assuming that we have a list of amino acids that we were expecting to be in here, we're not just flying completely blind, then we can use a data book to look up those RF values and therefore identify the different amino acids. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you're now confident that you could write a method for thin layer chromatography. If you are finding these required practical videos useful, then don't forget to like and subscribe for more A-level chemistry content coming soon.